Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janelle Norville, this edition Stop Stories. Health officials told the Victoria Hospital soon to be transformed into a full-scale respiratory hospital. The Ministry of Health and Wellness focuses testing strategy on frontline workers and repatriated nationals. And the Ministry of Agriculture engages banana stakeholders on the way forward. The Ministry of Health and Wellness remains committed to making available a respiratory hospital to be utilized for suspect and confirmed cases of COVID-19. More in this report from Fernel Neptune. Minister for Health, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, along with a delegation, recently toured the Victoria Hospital, which is being transformed into a full-scale respiratory hospital. Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac says, she is very pleased with the work being done on the respiratory hospital and hope it will assist in handling a possible surge of COVID-19 in St. Lucia. I'm hoping that we will be able to use this facility to contain the virus, to manage the virus and to treat the virus, which is what we have been doing. But um, we have not been as, um, as focused as we would like to be in terms of having the proper facility so this facility is going to give us an opportunity to have a better place to bring um, these potential you know, cases and for us to take care of these cases in a very nice facility. It is looking, it's already looking very, very nice. Um, the rooms I saw, the size of the rooms, the rooms have their own toilet in most cases or sometimes a person may be sharing a toilet with somebody else. But it's looking excellent from now, from, from you know, what I have seen. Chief Health Planner Dwight Calix spoke on the need for government to undertake this project of significant importance. As part of the um, COVID response, um, we had to um, get an intervention where we could um, appropriately manage our patients. So there's quarantine, um, there's isolation, and so on. So the respiratory facility was that response which would have um, managed in terms of our quarantine patients, but those quarantine patients which would have required medical attention. So our quarantine facility um, in the north would take care of those persons um, who are the suspect cases waiting for um, their results. Um, this facility would be the same suspect cases waiting for results but require, requiring medical attention. Executive Director of OKEUH and Victoria Hospital, Nancy Francis, highlighted the management of the works undertaken as to ensure the smooth running of the project. We have construction, ongoing construction works over at the respiratory hospital. At the same time, we have patients coming to receive care. So we have to ensure that the logistics is carefully coordinated between our project team, the contractor, and the World Bank team. So we have on ground our hospital engineer who's working very closely with Skelly Construction as well as the oversight committee from the World Bank. So on a daily basis, the, our project engineer will be in contact with Skelly Construction so they can look at the logistics for the day. And from a management perspective, every single day we have a manager on ground at the respiratory hospital to ensure that Things are done, things are coordinated in the right way, and we have and we are able to respond to any emergencies that may that may arise. The Victoria Hospital is designed to treat patients with respiratory illnesses such as COVID-19 and will have the capacity of 85 rooms. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. As of June 9, 2020, St. Lucia has recorded a total of 19 confirmed cases of COVID-19. 18 of these cases have fully recovered. The last case was a repatriated cruise national and was recorded on the 4th of June, 2020. St. Lucia continues to receive repatriated nationals, including students, cruise workers and residents who were stranded during the border closure. They are required to undergo a 14-day quarantine at a government-designated facility where testing is done as per protocol. 
Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Dr. Sharon Belmar-George, explained that during the past few weeks, the ministry's testing strategy has been focused on frontline workers and repatriated and nationals. We also continue testing the patients who access care at the respiratory clinics and the community level. Over 67 physicians and nurses were tested and over 152 fire service and emergency medical technicians and fire service officers were tested at this time. We continue to note negative test results for the frontline workers and persons who access care at the respiratory clinics. We've carried out a total of 1,204 tests to date. The Ministry of Health and Wellness would like to alert the public that as we open up the sectors, the risk of transmission increases. We can reduce this risk by ensuring that public health and social measures are maintained. We also anticipate new cases. However, if we all comply by the guidelines and maintain them, the possibility for transmission is minimized. The chief medical officer explained that the hurricane season brings with it new health threats and urged the public to prepare accordingly. Although our focus has been on COVID-19, we must prepare for the hurricane season as it commences on June 1st. This period of increased rainfall also signifies increases in vector-borne diseases such as dengue fever and leptospirosis. We advise the public to pay special attention to their immediate surroundings to ensure it is clean and not providing a breeding ground for mosquitoes and rats. The vector awareness plan by the Ministry of Health will be launched later this month. That was Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Dr. Sharon Melma george the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives recently held a consultation meeting with banana stakeholders with a view of apprising stakeholders of the current situation with the agriculture sector. Stakeholders highlighting the issues currently plaguing the sector also offered recommendations in the hopes of arriving at solutions. Details in this report. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives recently held a consultation meeting with banana stakeholders so as to update them on the state of the agriculture sector. The St. Lucia National Fair Trade Organization and stakeholders also seized the opportunity to provide recommendations to ministry officials so as to find solutions to the many challenges currently plaguing the sector. Some of the issues highlighted by stakeholders include the drought, quality of bananas available for export, inability of Winfresh UK Limited to pay farmers, and the emergence of pests threatening the production of crops. Chair of the St. Lucia National Fair Trade Organization, Eustace Monroes, indicated that the lack of payment for produce is adversely affecting farmers. We have been selling our fruit every week but unfortunately we have not been able to get our payments. Uh, consequently, farmers uh, are starved of getting the weekly payments and those payments is absolutely necessary. This is the payments that they would use to operate the farms. This is the cash flow that they need uh, in basic operations like paying for farm labor and especially on a harvest day. Um, so this is one of our key challenges at present and what we have seen where with the with the decimation of this drought that we would need some kind of assistance in relation to, to inputs and also to the rehabilitation of our farms. So this is a really, really huge challenge that we are facing at this time. But we believe with government assistance and the way forward, we should be able to overcome this challenge. The chair explained that funds from the government of St. Lucia had assisted in paying farmers. However, since that payout, some seven weeks have elapsed and farmers have not been paid despite continuing to produce for sale. The issue, according to Monroe's, lies primarily with Winfresh UK Limited, the entity purchasing goods from the farmers. He noted, however, that the Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, has promised to address the issue. Honorable Joseph indicated that a meeting had been held with Winfresh and all relevant stakeholders. An independent body was hired to review the operations of Winfresh UK Limited so as to be able to make recommendations to ensure viability and highlight the type of restructuring required for its survival. I spoke with the chairman of Winfresh 
um, who is a gentleman out of St. Vincent, and he told me that the report is in circulation. It came out this morning. I will review the report, and in the coming week, we will meet as a board to review the report, and of course, to go back to the stakeholders, the respective prime ministers, to um, review the report and to see what are the recommendations we can implement short, medium, and long term. So, as far as the the um, company in the UK, um, it has been, we are well on our way in looking at this company and to see how we can restructure this. Definitely, um, the company is experiencing a lot of financial difficulties and as shareholders, we believe there's a need for us to intervene at this point in time. The minister expressed that it is only right that the Ministry of Agriculture lobby on behalf of farmers so as to ensure they are paid for their goods. The government, he noted, continues to inject resources into Winfresh UK Limited to ensure it is able to pay farmers, including the recent contribution of $1 million. The minister did admit, however, that this was unsustainable, thus making the restructuring of the entity necessary. Minister Honorable Joseph explained that farmers will be receiving assistance with the other challenges. We know that um, we have a problem with the, the millibug, which we have just gotten a report from the research um, departments informing us that they got the identification done from a company in, in, the, U, in the U.S. So we are now um, putting in place protocols as to how we can reduce the population of the millibug. Um, so we are waiting for the company now. We are sorry, waiting for the, not the company, but we are waiting for the, um, the stakeholders, including the BPIP and the research department to come up with a program that, and a costing for that program. So we in the ministry can look at and see where we can get resources because we have a post-COVID um, assistance program coming up. So to see how we can support our farmers in reducing the population of the, that millibug. The Ministry of Agriculture, and by extension the government of St. Lucia, reaffirmed its commitment to assisting St. Lucian farmers where possible, ensuring a thriving agriculture sector. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The Leon Hess Comprehensive Secondary School last Friday hosted the closing ceremony for the first ever Next Big Inventor competition. Anisia Antoine tells us more. The Leon Hess Comprehensive Secondary School hosted the closing ceremony for the first ever Next Big Inventor competition. The competition was created by philanthropist and entrepreneur Joshua Esnad with the aim of encouraging entrepreneurism and innovation by young persons and provided an opportunity for the students of the Leon Hess Comprehensive Secondary School to display their ideas by demonstrating their products. The students presented their inventions and innovations to an audience of the public as well as to an expert panel comprising entrepreneurs, financiers, media experts and the creator of the competition, Joshua Esnard. Michelle Samuel, co-founder and managing director of the Next Big Inventor competition, expressed gratitude to the Ministry of Education for endorsing the project. This is a competition that was created by one of our very own son of the soil, Joshua Esnard. For those of you who do not know, he is the inventor of the cut buddy, and he is an entrepreneur at heart and a philanthropist. And part of his giving back movement was creating this competition so that he can reward and encourage young persons such as yourselves to create life hacks for problems that you can identify every single day. And I am glad to state that the Leon Hess Comprehensive Secondary School answered the call to be part of the pilot project. Philanthropist and entrepreneur Joshua Esnad made a presentation to the students, congratulating them on a job well done. Look at what you did. You identified a product, uh, a problem, uh, identified a solution, created a product, you basically built a brand. Um, many people can't even do that or haven't done that in their lives. So you're part of the 1% the of 1% of 1% that have succeeded in creating a whole program or business and to make it a better world, uh, a better island, and to help your island be more sustainable. So um, in the future, Michelle will carry the program. 
She's looking to do some exciting stuff, especially with the government. Um, also to merge it with some bigger competitions so that you guys get uh, a bigger stage to voice your ideas and your inventions. The closing ceremony for the next big inventor competition took place on Friday, June 5th, 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of Creole. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an affected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Limit the number of crew members to only essential persons. Practice frequent hand washing and cleaning of all boat surfaces. Limit contact with the public, keeping a safe distance between each person. Limit unnecessary conversation with customers and pairs during the sale of fish. Wash hands frequently with soap and running water. Or use 60 to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until water and soap are available. Sneeze and cough in a flexed elbow or into a tissue, immediately discarding the used tissue into a bin and wash hands with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water is available. And avoid close contact with persons having respiratory symptoms. More than ever before, your important role as gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly caught fish and other seafood. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle of Creole. Merci autant, Chanel. Merci, Madame, Département qui n'est responsabilité de formation à gouvernement de celle-ci, GIS, et puis Télévision Nationale, PIA NTN, Capuzato Nouvelle en Creole. Capuzato, Primus Hutchinson. Minister de Santé, Honorable Mary Isaac. À ce moment-là, il une délégation visiter l'hôpital Victoria qui a trouvé transformé pour un hôpital pour les gens qui ont souffert et puis étouffement. Sénateur Honorable Isaac a vrai qui est très plein et puis travail qui a fait dans cet hôpital là présentement et qui a créé sa carrière assistée pour abattre la maladie corona en cette ci Selon le ministre Isaac, il a créé qui facilité à servir en bonne façon pour traiter la maladie corona. Il a ajouté qui Facilité à qu'il délivre des services qui bien éprouvés pour les patients et qui sont d'accord que ces chambres-là ont grand assez et que chaque chambre ne facilite plus vite et qu'il bien pendant les autres ni pour les autres patients servir ensemble. Madame Isaac a remarqué que facilité à garder très excellence. Selon le chef officier pour le plan de santé, Dwight Calixt, ça c'est la qualité de facilité qui est nécessaire pour traiter et ménager les gens qui sont en quarantaine. Et dit aussi, faciliter la quarantaine en face à Nord, qui est adressé à les gens qui ont appris à la maladie pendant l'hôpital Victoria, qui a appris à traiter les problèmes d'étouffement, qui est adressé à qui ont appris à l'attention médicale. Directeur exécutif pour l'hôpital Owen King et l'hôpital Victoria, Nancy Francis, déclaré que pendant qu'ils ont continué à bâtir sur l'hôpital Victoria, L'année moun qui a continué à tuer pour recevoir le traitement, alors il est nécessaire pour vous ménager à faire de façon hydrate. L'hôpital pour traitement maladie et étouffement contre le corona a une capacité de 85 chambres. Constitution nationale pour la transportation publique, j'ai pris une décision pour réduire à sous limo l'auto-passager qui a opéré à sous route pays présentement. Selon 
trustee consitla Spencer McPhee si yo would teni envelo to passage a présent yo kai selman sa servi 10 ex chauffeur Jacques Opren nécessité en effort pour abattre contre maladie corona et commun pa je abe la pas de je moun ki ka voyager ko avant because of la pani assez moun ka ka communi ka travel ko avant oui 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 ex chauffeur Jacques Opren ça OK OK yo Jacques Opren ça ex ça ka travail assez bien parce que en dit pour teni 10 20 minutes bus ka Travel à même l'air, et que vous avez le fuel en et que vous avez le plus passé, vous avez le présent. Donc vous avez une nécessité pour couper à ce quantité de travail à présent. Ok. En même voie, moi je voulais mener un point d'art. Là, il y a un petit problème, nous avons fait ce délai. Un chai commuteur, là, vous avez bâché ce bus, là, vous avez le fil, parce que c'est un mini bus, vous n'avez pas de service. Il n'y a pas de problème. Mais tout l'autre côté. Mais là, il y a différentes places de business. Mais avant, il y a une ligne, il y a une ligne. Il y a une ligne. Donc, nous voulons plaider pour vous. Le mini-bus, c'est le même business. Le business aussi. Dans l'autre business. Et que nous voulons servir. Parce que nous ne voulons pas faire ça. Nous voulons préserver la vie. Il faut que nous puissions continuer à faire bataille contre la maladie de Corona. Le service NOS a été facilité à la santé comme une pays qui a fait seulement par apprêtement. Alors, il faut informer le public qui toute clinique, à part de clinique docteur, qui est faite par un appointement. Ça veut dire, si vous avez trouvé trouver assistance à ces facilités de santé, ça là, à ces défauts en commun pays, et qui est nécessaire pour faire un appointement avant. Un effort pour renforcer le web des de stations sociales, appel qui est fait pour les personnes pour visiter ces wellness centers pour faire un appointement. Mais la visitation docteur est available par jour, depuis 8h au bon matin pour 3h et demi après-midi. Je vous conseille à vous de ne pas visiter ou de ne pas visiter ce wellness center le bon matin si ce n'est pas une situation de secours. Mais vous savez visiter le docteur tout le bon jour. En parlant de ça, la clinique pour le traitement de la vie a commencé à l'hôpital Owen King le 11 juin 2020 par appointement seulement. Tout le client qui a reçu un appel de téléphone, a fait des appels de téléphone pour faire ce qu'on sait qui joue, qui vous savez ni appointement pour visiter l'hôpital Owen King pour trouver un traitement pour Zio. Bon, tout le monde qui n'a attention pour visiter ces wellness centers, il est supposé porter masse à souffrir de Zio et respecter tout le monde qui est en place avant de trouver un traitement dans ces facilités. Il est trouvé la meilleure sanitaire, le ministère de la Santé qui a continué pour conseiller tout le monde, et bien continuer pour faire ça, pour suivre ces protocoles-là qui sont en place, et pour prendre toutes les précautions qui sont nécessaires. Pendant le ministère, il prendre toutes les précautions même pour protéger le travail avec les patients contre la maladie de Corona. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé nouvelle amie, madame. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie pour encore, si vous conservez la vie, de vous présenter la présentation de la nouvelle acquérie. Et ça, c'est le mon vieux présentation général. Merci à Pill Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.